Hello everyone, my name is Da Hong Liu. I'm from Mitsubishi Electric Research Labs. Here I'm going to present a paper to be published in ICEMS 2020. The title of my presentation is EMI Reduction in PWM Inverters Using Adaptive Frequency Modulation Carriers. This is a joint work with my collaborator Ratsu Skawara and my colleague Phil Olick. PWM inverters are widely used in motor drives because of their high efficiency and a wide range of output frequency for speed control. However, PWM inverters also have some issues, such as EMI issue caused by high speed switching operations of power devices, especially for high voltage, large power PWM inverters. EMI of PWM inverters may cause misoperation of the equipment itself it may also interfere other nearby devices. If the EMI radiation level is high, it may be even harmful to human health. Therefore, it is very important to control the EMI level such that the power electronic equipment can satisfy EMC regulations. As we know, EMI sources of power electronic equipment are DUDT and DIDT of switching devices. EMI generated by the switching devices propagates in a non-linear, complicated path to victims in conducted and radiated forms. To suppress EMI, there are many classical methods such as sheltering, filtering, and grounding. For power electronic equipment, there are some specific methods such as soft switching and frequency modulation carrier. In this presentation, we aim to reduce EMI using frequency modulation carriers in PWM inverters. PWM waveforms are generated by comparing two signals. One is a high frequency carrier signal, which is a typically sinusoidal or triangular signal. The other one is low frequency reference modulation signal, which is a sine wave of our desired frequency. By comparing those two signals, the output of the comparator is a PWM signal, which is used to control the switching devices. Therefore, the output of the switching devices is also PWM waveform, but with high voltage. If we use a low-pass filter on the output of PWM, we can get a sinusoid signal of our desired frequency to drive motors. Here we show frequency spectra of PWM waveforms using two different carriers. The top left one will use a 20 kHz sinusoid waveform as the carrier. And the top right one will use a 20 kHz triangle waveform as the carrier. From both frequency spectra, we observe that besides the fundamental frequency component, we also have a lot of harmonics. The harmonic frequency it's related to the carrier frequency and the reference frequency. In the bottom figure, we show the EMI measurement of a power electronic equipment. We can observe that carrier harmonics exceed EMC standard limits. So next, we will focus on how to reduce the EMI of carrier harmonics. In order to reduce EMI of carrier harmonics, a widely used method is to use random frequency modulation carrier. Instead of using periodic sine wave or triangle wave as the carrier signal, we randomize the frequency of the carrier such that the switching time dithers in a very narrow range. If we check the frequency spectrum of the PWM using random frequency modulation carrier, we observe that the carrier harmonics are no longer spikes but spread in a certain frequency range. There are pros and cons of this random frequency modulation carrier method. First, it randomly spreads carrier harmonics energy and reduces the conducted EMI level. However, it is not a deterministic method, meaning that it works well only in a statistical sense, and it is difficult to implement in hardware. Since the Spread spectrum is not pure flat, 
it can be further improved in reducing the EMI level. In this paper, we proposed a deterministic method to modulate the frequency of the carrier signal to achieve a reduced EMI level of carrier harmonics. First, we consider linear frequency modulation carrier. In linear frequency modulation carrier, we linearly increase or decrease the frequency of the carrier signal. In the top medium figure, we show the time domain waveform of a linear frequency modulation carrier in which we linearly increase the frequency of the carrier signal. In the top right figure, we show the frequency spectrum of the linear frequency modulation carrier in which we can observe that the spectrum is flat in a certain frequency range of the modulation. In the bottom figure, we show the PWM waveform using the linear frequency modulation carrier. If we use a low pass filter on the PWM waveform, we can also achieve a low frequency sinusoidal signal of our desired frequency. So how can we design a linear frequency modulation carrier? As we know for sine carrier, we In this slide, we compare spectra of PWM waveforms using four different carriers. When we're using random frequency modulation carrier, the EMR Here we show the simulation model using MATLAB. In this simulation model, we consider two different carriers of the PWM inverter. The first one is periodic triangle carrier, and the second one is a linear friction modulation sine carrier. And we use spectral analyzer to measure the EMI level of the PWM inverter to the power system. Here are the simulation results of EMI spectra. When we use periodic triangle carrier, we can observe that there are many spikes of carrier harmonics. When we use linear frequency modulation sine carrier, the spikes are spread out in certain frequency range from 10 kHz to 30 kHz. So the EMI level is reduced by nearly 20 dB. However, we also observe that the spread spectrum is not flat as we expected. So why is that? If we revisit the equivalent circuit of EMI propagation, we can see that EMI generated by switching devices propagates through a very complicated path represented by impedance Z1 to the victim Z2. So the EMI received by the victim is related to the EMI generated by the source and also related to the propagation path. When we use a linear frequency modulation carrier to reduce the EMI 
that EMI is actually the EMI of the source. So now the question is, can we adaptively modulate the carrier frequency such that we can reduce the EMI at the victim? So here's the idea of adaptive frequency modulation for EMI suppression. When we use a linear frequency modulation carrier, we achieve a flat EMI spectrum at the source side within a certain frequency range. If the propagation path is also with a flat spectrum, then we can receive an ideal flat EMI spectrum at the victim side. However, in practice, the propagation path won't be flat spectrum but with some unknown shape. In that situation, even we use linear frequency modulation carrier, we won't receive a flat EMI spectrum at the victim side. However, if we based on that received EMI spectrum, we adaptively modulate the carrier frequency such that the multiplication of those two will be a flat spectrum. In that case, we can reduce EMI level furthermore. Now the problem is, given measured EMI power spectrum MF of a linear frequency modulation carrier, how can we adaptively modulate the carrier frequency to achieve a desired flat EMI power spectrum V? Let's assume we have uniform frequency samples from F1 to Fn. So our goal is to achieve nonlinear time samples from T1 to Tn corresponding to the uniform frequency samples. To solve this problem, we have different equations. So first, we assume the total number of switching operations does not change before and after frequency modulation. So which means the total energy of EMI won't change. That's how we get the first equation. And secondly, since we have nonlinear frequency modulation, then for each frequency, we have a weight act on M to achieve a flat spectrum D. So the weight will be proportional to the sweep time of frequency Fi. And if we sum all the weights together, we get alpha T and T is the sweep period. So we combine all these equations, we can achieve a frequency as a function of time. So once we get frequency as a function of time, we can integrate the frequency to achieve the phase of the carrier. So for the nonlinear frequency modulation sine carrier, we can use the expression as shown in the uh, bottom equation. And for the nonlinear frequency modulation triangle carrier, similarly, we got the equation after it. And note that if the desired frequency spectrum is flat, then we can prove that the maximum of the EMI spectrum MF is greater than the maximum of the desired spectrum D. So which means by nonlinear friction modulation, we can minimize the EMI level. Again, this is a simulation model using MATLAB. In this simulation model, we consider the triangle carrier and the nonlinear friction modulation carrier for comparison. Here are the simulation results. From the bottom left figure, we can see that when we use the nonlinear frequency modulation sine carrier, we can flatten the EMI spectrum within certain frequency range and reduce the EMI level of carrier harmonics. When we use the nonlinear frequency modulation triangle carrier, we can reduce the EMI level furthermore with a total reduction of more than 20 dB. We compute the total harmonic distortion of different carriers using the bottom equation. From the figure, we can observe that our proposed nonlinear frequency modulation triangle carrier achieved the best THD value. 
which is 4.8%. Here is our experiment setup for validation. We use an EMI receiver to measure the EMI of a power conversion circuit with LCR low. So in the top right figure, we show the schematic diagram of the circuit. And in the bottom figure, we show the measured EMI with two different carriers. When we use the triangle carrier, we can observe spikes of carrier harmonics. When we use the frequency modulation carrier, we can suppress the EMI level by 20 dB. To conclude, we propose to use deterministic adaptive frequency modulation carrier to reduce EMI of PWM inverters. Simulations and experiments demonstrate that the conducted EMI of PWM inverters can be reduced by more than 20 dB using our proposed method with small harmonic distortion. Compared to the random frequency modulation carrier scheme, our proposed deterministic frequency modulation carriers simplify the implementation of frequency modulation. That's all my presentation. Thank you.